What is interesting about these images is that they say it didn't matter uh, how many times you shot us, these did not result in, in wounds. These, uh, these have given rise actually to sprouts. Gina, I mean, she died, I think, on the 16th of September, right? So it was the 17th of September, and I remember I was quite angry and frustrated, actually. Mm -hmm. And I felt the need to explain to, especially to a non-Iranian audience, what was actually going on. I'm not necessarily a political activist, but I felt the need to, to do something. So I made this illustration, and I thought, you know, if you would explain um, that the uh, hijab in Iran is compulsory, people can't really relate to that because they would think, you know what, yeah, okay, it's their culture, I guess. You know, you would get maybe a response like that. So I thought, how can I explain this in such a way that it also becomes uh, something personal to, yeah. to, something universal, right? So that's why I came up with the text, did you know that letting your hair blow in the wind is a crime in Iran? And I have to say, I'm not the first one coming up with this sentence because there have been many activists before me who were like, uh, advocating for, you know, you should be able to show your hair. Uh, like Masi Alinejad, she wrote a book, My Wind in the Hair, like a few years ago. Uh, so I'm not the first one uh, to, to put something out there, but yeah, I made this illustration and I just thought, okay, I'm gonna post it tomorrow morning. It was a Sunday morning. And before I knew, like, it blew up, uh, people asked me to, to download, if I, uh, if I could send them a download link, they wanted to print it. At first I got like, a few requests, like 10, 20, then it became like 50, 100, and I was like, okay, I need to do this differently. So um, I put up a download link. I, I think it's still on my um, bio. And then it spread all over the world uh, in, during protests. You already said it a bit, but and it's hard maybe to say it as an artist yourself who made it, but why do you think that it worked? So I think really the sentence was something everyone could relate to, because in the Netherlands, you know, we bike, it's, it's really, so self-evident for us that this is a right that we have to have our hair blowing in the wind. And once you realize that, oh my God, this is a crime in another country, I think then the penny drops what this actually means, how extreme actually uh, the oppression in Iran is. Yeah. Um, and is it like uh, you said, it's mostly, it was mostly targeted on an international audience, yeah, maybe yeah. people who didn't know what is the situation in Iran. Uh, in these pictures, are they also, is the picture also used in Iran itself? I don't think this one is used in Iran, but I have another one with the girls. I know that some people approached me, they wanted to print it uh, in Iran, so I know they've printed it. I know I have a cup where these girls are printed on. I know it reached a schoolgirl in Iran who also went to the protests herself. So I know that this has reached some people. I've like, uh, so I'm wearing this T-shirt actually, and some people ask me like, oh, where can I also buy this T-shirt in Iran? And I said, you know what? You can have my print. You can download it. You can do with it whatever you want. So yeah. I don't know what they exactly did with it, but um, you collected a couple of images, um, like what is happening on the streets in Iran, what people are spreading. Can you maybe explain what we see here? Uh, so I collected these images. Um, they're related, actually, to the chemical school attacks on uh, chemical attacks on schoolgirls in Iran. So a while back, uh, a few months ago, all of a sudden, uh, there were uh, reports about uh, little schoolgirls actually um, fainting, uh, passing out, uh, being being brought to a hospital. There were supposedly chemical attacks. So there has been no research done. So nobody knows exactly what kind of uh, ke chemicals they were attacked by, but a lot of illustrations were made, and I really liked the image in the middle. Uh, a lot of girls were supporting each other, uh, and I think w what I thought was actually so, so interesting, also obviously very sad, is that it seemed that these schoolgirls seem to be a real threat to the Iranian regime. Uh, so the schoolgirls who initially protested, you know, took off their headscarves in the school class. They were demonstrating so bravely, you know, and it seemed almost as if this was a revenge, you mm -hmm. know, on these schoolgirls. And there were like 13, 14, 15, very, very young. Um, so yeah, th these illustrations are related to, to, to that period when there were chemical attacks. I haven't heard of those attacks anymore yet, but... It was really weird, like, I think it was in a few months. 
Yeah, yeah um, like every week uh, we, we heard like there's another, there's another chemical attack on our school girls. So the image in the middle is an image of uh, a woman who has been shot with pellets and it looks like small dots on, on a body. Um, you can see it in the, in the uh, image uh, left below. A lot of people were shot in the eye, like from really close by. But what was interesting, and so the image on the right is about, um, he, this is Khodanur Leji, he was killed during a protest uh, and he died. But what is interesting about these images is that is related to uh, that they say it didn't matter uh, how many times you shot us, these did not result in, in wounds. These, uh, these have given rise actually to sprouts, to new life, to hope. So we have actually become angrier. We have actually become more strong because you know, we're going to actually fight. Uh, so yeah, these images are related. Uh, and they are all uh, just able to get a context. Um, they are spread online anonymously, or are people putting it on uh, uh, Yeah, so the there, streets, are, there are a lot of uh, images. There are, f there are a few Instagram channels where you can see. So there's Iranian pop art, Iranian women graphic design, Iranian free art. Some are anonymous, anonymously. Some have their like Insta handle next to it. So if you guys want to know who made it, I can always look it up for you. But mm -hmm. um, you can find it there. And there's so 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 many images. So it's it's crazy how much is made. Yeah. A year ago, all the women on the stage here said that um, they said, yeah, it's not only about women's rights. It's about so much bigger. It's about economy. It's about uh, minority positions, and it's also something that is um, uh, what it made what made it unique. Uh, they said back then is that all the different people from all different parts of society were uh, united in in this movement, in this protest. What changed in that position over the year? I believe like, especially Gen Z in, mm -hmm. in Iran, they grew up in a different world. They had access to internet. They see how you know the rest of the world is functioning. I think especially for them, they realize what the woman in woman life freedom, that woman is actually, that symbolizes the oppression, not only of women, but also of minorities, of queers, of um, like, uh, uh, yeah, mm, yeah, other ethnicities. Mm -hmm. um, I believe this is still a wish going forward. Like, I think now everyone realizes, like, no one is free until everyone is free. Yeah, that, sorry. <laughs> Thank you.